come specially here from New York to yes. see this. That's right. Well, to participate in it, in it. and, and uh, the idea that something would be destroyed with a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to see it, I couldn't resist it. What makes it uh, so special for you that, uh, that what is your, and your involvement in this? Uh, what have you put in it? There were four topics. I think there were fire, water, earth, and air. So I chose water. And uh, after I chose the subject, I deliberated for, for days, weeks, months. Oh, oh my, my God, what am I going to produce? This is, you, feel, you feel a lot of pressure coming on yourself. 60 seconds is a very short time. At the same time, it's a very long time. So eventually, uh, I ended up in my neighborhood at a water sewage treatment plant where when you flush the toilet, water goes to this place and everything is processed in these giant futuristic eggshells and then converted back into energy and then the water is, becomes utilized again. So I thought water, this is water, water is a political thing. In the future we're going to have problems all over the world with water. Who gets to drink fresh water? So that's why I chose this subject and that's why I chose this particular subject for, for my 60 second film. After reading the manifest of the event, it seems to me almost like uh, it is a ridicule of uh, today's mass culture. Uh, what do you have to say about this? Yeah, it's, it, it's obviously a statement against the, the trash that in, gen in general is produced by, by Hollywood and other systems like that. It's, it's entertainment at a kind of dumb vulgar, violent level. So what these people here in Tallinn are doing, they're calling filmmakers to action, to make something meaningful, to make something that's going to disappear. So it's a very provocative idea. That's why it's exciting, that's why it's challenging. It seems uh, almost revolutionary, like, uh, like you say, to cause someone to act in some direction to do something about it. What do you think the filmmaking community in the world will actually do about this? Well, I think the filmmaking community is not really going to respond to something like this. I mean, what's, what's important is the people that are here at this event, people that watch it, people that participate in it, are going to be affected. And that effect may move out to other circles. But if you look back to the 1920s, there were artistic movements, the Dada movement, the, the surre surrealist movement who were afraid of another war coming and they started destroying art because art had become this, this, this object that had this holy reverence which was controlled by bourgeois institutions. So I think film in a certain way is kind of controlled by a similar type institution so it's very important to kind of take this radical challenge that uh, the 62nd uh, year in solitude is offering and, and kind of step up and do something about it. I understand it has a lot to do with the freedom of film and freedom of making films without the commercial pressure. Uh, as you mentioned about the water and the fire and the elements, there is a fire in the performance uh, burning the film strip right during the showing of the film. Uh, how do you see that? Uh, the symbol can influence or have a meaning to the general public? I think there's different layers that you can interpret that particular situation. Film is such a beautiful thing. I think when all of these people are together at this special location that they built exactly for this particular evening, they know they're going to witness it. In life, you might be religious. I'm not religious. I have, I have, I have a moment each day that I'm very lucky to be alive. And I think when we all watch this film, we're gonna be all lucky that we're here to see this. And it's more about us. I think that's what I can take away from, from this evening. But emotionally, I'm not sure how I'm gonna react. But I think it's, you know, once again, because of, the, because of this extreme uh, deconstruction of, of this material, this using fire, this old element, that it's gonna be very emotional. So as, I, as I see the fire being that um, inspiration that uh, we want to get from life, fire being the life, us living in the world, 
and if the fire is taken away from us uh, with all of the <laughs> all of the so to say shit <laughs> that is piled on us yeah. every day yeah, that yeah. we have to hear right. and, and and all the commercials uh -huh. and advertising uh -huh. then how do you how would you see a life without that uh, uh, darkness on us and, and living our life as inspiration and that fire in uh -huh. us I think, uh, I think at the end of the manifesto, it said waiting is death, which I thought was a very interesting statement. So I think to, to answer your statement and your question, I, I think it's death. I think, I think, I think to, not, to not embrace the fire, uh, the fire of creativity, the fire of humanity, the fire of friendship uh, is, is, is death. And I think a lot of people live a very slow death. They're, they're just slowly dying because they don't have that fire. I totally, I can totally agree. Uh, I don't know what else to ask. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, fine. Yeah, that's, but, that's, that's uh, great. But uh, thank you very much, Mark. Uh, if you could say something that uh, should, sorry, if you could say something uh, to people who are thinking about coming to Estonia, you have seen it now a few days. Uh, what should they expect? Ex 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 Sorry, I I'll start over. Yeah. Uh, Mark, you have been to Tallinn, Estonia now for a few days. You came here especially for that. Uh, what would you tell to filmmakers who are thinking of finding new places, new locations? Uh, well, one of the most intense films ever made is Andrei Tarkovsky's Stalker. I have a friend of a friend who took me down to the location where uh, some of the big scenes were, were, were shot in Stalker uh, to experience something that intense. It, I felt like I went back into that movie at that particular time. The, the sun had gone down, it was just getting dark, uh, I had jet lag. Uh, I, that's, that's one reason why somebody should, should come to, 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 to Tallinn, just to see that, just to experience it. And, 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 and for another reason, there's some kind of magic here. There's, there's something in this earth, in these walls, in these kind of old streets that has some kind of magical quality. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you uh, Eta. <laughs> Balloon. <laughs> cool.